because your girl never has 2019 releases because she broke. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my top 10 favorites of 2019. Yes, I am aware that it is basically the end of January and I'm just filming this video now, but I have not filmed in over a month because Teachers College is kicking my ass. Just haven't had the time, honestly. I have been spending from 8 to 3 in the classroom and then from 3 to like 11 at night planning my week and my next day because I'm teaching math and we all know math is not my strong suit. <laughs> so I am finally here with this video. We are going to go from our number 10 spot all the way up to our number one spot, the best book that I read in 2019. A lot of these books are not 2019 releases, they are just books that I personally read in 2019 and really enjoyed. So without further ado, let us get started. Coming in at number 10 is the entire Folk Air trilogy. I only have the first two books, Cruel Prince and Wicked King by Holly Black. Queen of Nothing is actually on its way to my house in the mail right now, so it's coming, but also really enjoyed it. I loved this trilogy. I read the first book, Cruel Prince, on January 1st, 2019, and I think Queen of Nothing I finished in October 2019. So I did read the entire trilogy in 2019 and absolutely fell in love with the characters and the world. This series has some of my favorite morally gray characters and I absolutely loved reading about them. I really do wish that there is a spin-off series coming. I know there's not, but a girl can dream. Coming in at number nine is Death Prefers Blondes by Kayla Broerg. If you guys are new to this channel, you don't know this, but I have an obsession with drag queens. I love them and their art form, and I just think they are the most incredible people in the entire world. This book follows a bunch of drag queens who are part of a heist team, and it is just so entertaining. It is so funny. I love every single queen in this book, and I just like fell in love with the characters, and I'm I'm so sad that it's a standalone, like I need more of them, but I highly recommend if you want a good laugh, pick up this book because it is hilarious. Coming in at number eight is Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson. This book is kind of like a domestic thriller, but not. Like it's very hard to explain, but basically it follows four different people who are somehow related in the end. It's kind of like those movies like Valentine's Day where like you're following a whole bunch of different storylines, but then they all come together in the end. It was so freaking good. So many twists and turns I didn't see coming. I think this was like one of the first thrillers that I read of the year and I was like super into it. Did not want to put it down. Definitely recommend it if you're into thrillers. It's such a fun book. Coming in at number seven is Temper by Lane Fargo. This is a new to me author and I highly recommend y'all check this author out because this book is a complete mindfuck. It's about this actress in Chicago who's having a lot of trouble getting a part and that's when she gets a part from this huge theater company. It's run by a director named Mal who is known for mentally abusing his actors and actresses to try to make them the best that they can be and Kira believes that she can handle it but she can't handle it and shit goes down like so many twists and turns it is just such a mindfuck like you don't know who to trust who not to trust it is so good highly recommend y'all check it out and it's like a fairly short book too so like I flew through it in like a day and a half because I couldn't put it down it was just like one twist after another pretty sure she just came out with another book or it's coming out very shortly so I'm definitely gonna be checking it out because I'm a fan of this all. Coming in at number six is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. I actually have Girls of Storm and Shadow beside me because I have to haul it. I have not read it yet, obviously, because I haven't even hauled it yet, but I loved this book. I personally thought that this book was really well done. The themes explored were portrayed really well and discussed really well. I loved the characters and I loved the whole atmosphere that was going on in it. I'm also just a huge fan of the cover. I think it's like gorgeous and it looks real pretty on my shelf. The characters were really like the highlight of the book and the ending like leaves you on such a cliffhanger. I am so excited to pick up the next book to see where the story progresses. So number six. Coming in at number five is another trilogy because I have no chill and couldn't pick my favorite of the three. So it is the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber. It's Caraval legendary finale. I absolutely 
loved these books. I read them at the end of the year and instantly fell in love with the characters and the atmosphere. Literally binged the series in the span of like five days because I needed to know what was happening next. I needed to know what was happening to my babies. I love the characters like I've said a million times. I know that this series is one that's either you love it or you hate it. I fell on the I love it scale. I just think that it is so well done. And I'm honestly just like really upset that I don't get to see Scarlet and Julian and Tella and Legend and the whole Carval world anymore. Like it's over and it's really upsetting. Like I love this series so much. Coming in at number four is one that actually really surprised me. I did not expect to like it as much as I did, but it is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I picked this up because of of the TV show because I wanted to watch the TV show. Have I watched the TV show yet? No, but that was the whole reason behind picking this book up and I was pleasantly surprised. Like I thought I would like it. It's a thriller, you know, like that's my shit. But I was like really into this book right from the beginning like it hooked me i like needed to keep reading right from the very beginning you are introduced with a prologue in which somebody dies and you have no idea who the person who dies is and then the rest of the book is just like you trying to figure out who the person who died was. I was completely wrong about who I thought was dead and who the culprit was. Like, I was so off, which made it so much better for me because I hate being able to call the endings of things. But it was, like, way better than I expected. So if you have not picked up Big Little Lies and if you've only watched the TV show, I know that a lot of people say the TV show is really good, but pick up the book because it is hella good. Coming in at number three is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I know that a lot of people have this book on their top list of 2019 and I listened to it on audiobook. I personally think that it is way better on audiobook. I think that if I had read it as a physical form I wouldn't have liked it as much as I did but the audiobook is a full cast audiobook and it's basically like interview format and it is so well done and I was obsessed with this book. I read it and wanted to read it it again and again and again. Obviously I didn't because I never reread books because I have way too many on my TBR to do that. Everybody knows what the story of Daisy Jones is at this point because everybody and their mother talks about it on booktube but I highly recommend it. It was really well done. Such a great story and it was one that actually made me cry at the end and I never cry at books so like that like bumped it way up for me because I was like damn a book actually made me feel an emotion. Amazing. Coming in at number two is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern. And I know that this one is a very controversial one. I know that a lot of people hated this book and a lot of people really liked this book. I, again, am on the scale of I really liked it. I was thoroughly entertained with this book. I loved Reed. I know that he is not the best character, but I really enjoyed him. Lou, one of my favorite characters in the entire world. She is wonderful, so sassy, and I was a big fan. I know that a lot of people do not feel that way, but personally, I was into it. I really like witch books. I don't think I really read any witch books in previous years. I just discovered them this year and I was super into it and now I just want to read all the witch books ever. So if you have any really good witch books, leave them in the comments down below because I'm very interested. And then finally, my top book of 2019. Probably no surprise for a lot of people because I love this author. She's one of my favorite authors, but it is Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I love the Renegade series. I still have not read Supernova because I don't have the time right now because of Teachers College. As soon as it is over, I'm gonna be devouring that book. I love these characters. I love this world. I love the whole idea of the superheroes and the supervillains and just everything about this book makes me so happy. The cliffhanger at the end it killed me and I need to know if a certain character is okay because they are my angel baby unicorn and I love them and I just want to protect them at all costs and if they're not okay, I'm gonna be real mad at Marissa Meyer. So, real mad. Alright everybody, so that was my top 10 of 2019. I'm sorry that this video is so late. There's nothing I can do about it because I'm dying inside right now. So as soon as January is over, I'll be back to like actually uploading things on time. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm usually late to the party, let's be serious. Let me know down below a couple of your favorite books of 2019 and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>